Take three. So, uh, welcome back. And we're on, still in chapter seven. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And this is finding the matrix exponential of just matrices that have complex value eigenvalue, uh, complex value eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And these are, without a doubt, one of the most hand wavy methods that you can use and the reason reason why i'm showing it is because it's a lot faster than the other way you can do it which is a massive pain in the rear and so yeah so let's 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 jump in so all right you're given this matrix here right and so your characteristic polynomial then uh to find your eigenvalues is going to be uh, lambda two uh, negative lambda plus two uh, negative parentheses lambda plus two and then you get lambda squared plus four lambda plus five okay and so one of your lambdas is negative two this guy here please don't factor this guy uh it's tempting to say lambda plus one lambda plus five and uh, it, it's wrong so don't do it uh, this is actually the most common mistake on uh this problem so this wasn't the actual problem, but a problem like this on the final from uh, spring 2018, everyone just factored it incorrectly. And so like it, it's, it's, I, I, I'm, I myself am not good with factoring anymore, um, but you guys are the ones taking this for a grade. So, yeah, you know, you should learn, learn how to factor, right? And so, yeah, we gotta use the quadratic formula. So negative four plus or minus the square root of b squared, 16 minus four ac, which is 20, all over two a, which is two. And this is negative two plus or minus i. All right, cool. So now step two then is to find the eigenvectors, right? And so lambda equals negative two is straightforward. Oh, uh, one thing before we find that, notice how this has two eigenvalues associated with it because it's two negative two plus i, and then you have negative two minus i. And in general, uh, if you have a real valued matrix, right, if this is, so this is only real values, right? Um, uh, complex valued uh, eigen uh, values uh, will come from, uh, will come in conjugate pairs. So that, what does that mean? That means that, okay, I have a three by three matrix here, right? What is the most uh, number of complex valued eigenvalues that I can have? And the answer is two, because I can't have three complex value eigenvalues because if I have t the third one, that means there has to be a fourth one that comes uh, as a conjugate pair. And so, yeah, for three by three, you can only have two uh, complex valued eigenvalues, as you can see here, right? The plus or minus indicates they come in pairs. And yeah, and so for like a six by six, you can have two, four, or six, uh, and they're all common pairs if the entries in the matrix are real valued. Okay. Anyways, so back to uh, finding the eigenvectors. So uh, lambda equals two, you just do it the normal way. Uh, well, you do all of these the normal way. So zero, one, zero. 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 3, negative 1. Yeah, okay, 1, 3, negative 1. And uh, we can see that V1 eyeballing, uh, 1, 0, 1 should work. Okay, erase, please. 1, 0, 1. Okay, and so again, uh, we want to write A in terms of like S something, S inverse form. Uh, this middle guy is going to change just because we have complex values, or in my method, we have some complex value. Uh, so no, let's not call it Q, let's call it R. So let's say S, R, S inverse here. And so S then is going to be, uh, for now, right, still 1, 0, 1. And then R, for now, uh, is going to be what you're familiar with, which is uh, you take the eigenvalue, put it on the diagonal. And so far we have this, okay? Now, let's deal with a complex valued one. So I'm gonna deal with negative two plus i. And what do I get? I get negative i, one, zero, one, one minus i, negative one, one, three, negative one minus i. All right, and how in the world, well, 
now you can't just eyeball eigenvectors. If you, I mean, I mean, you can. If you're good enough to eyeball complex value eigen like vectors, like kudos to you. I I cannot do that. Okay. Um, so how do we do this? Well, remember the definition of an eigenvector then is uh, right. If you multiply by x y z, you get zero zero zero. So let's now just take then. Uh, one row at a time. So let's take this first row. And so I get negative i10 times xyz is equal to this guy, the first entry, which is zero, right? And so now I have negative ix. Um, if you multiply out, you get negative ix plus y is equal to zero. And so what do we do? Well, the easiest way to do this is since you have negative i times x, just assume that x is going to be the conjugate, all right? The complex conjugate of i. So we're going to make this guy i, all right? So negative i, the conjugate is positive i. And so now you get i times i there. And then now you, now you can solve for y here, right? And, how, and then what is y? Well, y is going to be, uh, let's say, this negative i times i is negative i squared, which is which is one, which is positive one. So one plus y is equal to zero, right? And then y is equal to negative one. So y is gonna be negative one, right? And now uh, we have to solve for z, all right? And so how do we solve for z? You do it in the following way. Um, you, you, you take another row then. And now you have uh, one, one minus i, and negative one, right? But now you're multiplying it by i, negative one, z. And so this should equal zero, but right now it equals i plus i minus one, and then minus z, okay? And so now you get zero is equal to two i minus one minus z, and so z is equal to two i minus one. Right, and then so z is equal to two i minus one, two i minus one, and then uh, you can just use as a check for this last row then, uh, one, three, negative one minus i times i negative one, two uh, i minus one, and you'll get i minus three, and then uh, you'll get plus negative one minus i times two i minus one, which is, equal to what one uh, minus uh, one plus two that, that's where the two comes from and then plus i minus two i and so this is then three minus i right so you get i minus three plus three minus i which is equal to zero and so yeah so this is our complex value eigenvector and we're going to write v is equal to um, i negative one two i minus one and the trick is the trick is this um the trick is that you always need a zero somewhere in your matrix and so if you if this weren't zero if this were something else like q or something uh, the way we're going to have to do it then is we're going to have to row reduce and get our zeros here. And and then you can do this assumption thing um, with a row that has a zero in it. Uh, but for now, we're just, for now, because there is a zero up here, we could we can just use this first row to, uh, to, to find our matrix, okay? And so, uh, so now you get V2 is equal to this guy. All right. I can just tell you what V3 is. V3 is just gonna be the complex conjugate of anything that's complex, all right? So uh, instead of two I minus one, you might wanna write it as negative one plus two I, all right? And so then this becomes negative one minus two I. And so that, that's gonna be what V3 is, I guarantee you. Um, and so there's no point in, 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 in checking what negative two minus I is, what that eigenvalue of that is going to be. And so we have V2 and V3. Now, it's tempting to just put these guys in here uh, and then you know fill up these columns. However, 
try to take the inverse of something that has an imaginary value in it, uh, not happening, right? So, 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 how, 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 how do we deal with this? Okay, so essentially, when you have complex value eigenvalues, you only need to find one complex eigenvector. So we found v two. Okay, so we're gonna ignore v three. Just pretend v three never. I never told you guys even how to find v three. Whatever, delete it. Okay. Um, let's just take v two. We're gonna do the following. We're gonna take v two and we're gonna split it up into its real and its imaginary parts. All right. And so what is that? Well, here i is essentially 0 plus 1 i, right? So 0 plus 1 i is i. And the negative 1 is negative 1 plus 0 i. And the negative 1 plus 2 i is negative 1 plus 2 i, all right? Now what we're going to do, I'm going to take the real part and I'm going to stick it in here. And then I'm going to take the imaginary part, which is 1, 0, 2, and I'm going to stick it in the second column. All right, and that's going to be my S. Okay. Do you see what I just did? I just took, I split, I took an imaginary eigenvector, all right, or an, or an eigenvector with complex value entries, split it up into real and imaginary parts, and then stuck those real and imaginary parts in here, all right, into the matrix. So this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. All right. Now, what do I do with this block down here, right? I have a two by two block that I still need to fill out. Well, you look at which eigenvector this correspond to, right? So this eigenvector corresponded to the value two plus negative two plus i, right? So lambda is negative equal to negative two plus i, and in, in, in terms of a plus b i, all right? We see that a then in our case is negative two and b is equal to one, right? So if so, since all imaginary val uh, values can be written as a plus or complex values can be written as a plus bi, uh, negative two plus i is the same thing as a being negative two and b equals one. Cool. All right. So now what? Now this two by two block down here turns into a, B, negative B, A. All right. Don't ask me why. And so this becomes then A, B, negative B, A. So A is negative 2, B is 1, negative B is 1, A is negative 2. All right. And okay. And so now we have S and R, and uh, we just need to find S inverse. And to show you guys that this works, I'm going to plug this in a matrix calculator, right? So we should get a is equal to S R S inverse, right? Because that's, that's what I, that's what I claimed. And so plugging it in one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, negative one, two. All right. And then uh, let me, uh, actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to type it on the off screen and then I'll drag it over when we're done. Uh, one, negative one, negative two. All right, and so now I want inverse. Aha, so here's our original matrix, right? It's negative two, one, zero, negative one, one, zero. And here, right, here's A, uh, here's S, matrix A is S, matrix B is R. And look, S, R, uh, or S, R, S inverse gets us exactly what we had at the beginning, all right? So it works. So this method works, even though it looks super hand wavy and I agree it is, um, it works. So A equals SRS inverse. So, okay, exciting. So to find the matrix exponential then, so to find the matrix exponential, right? It makes sense then just to say, E to the AT is equal to S, E to the RT, S inverse, right? So that's going to be uh, S, which is one, zero, one. I don't have the zero, negative one, negative one, one, zero, two, I believe. Yes, all right. And 
uh, e to the RT, which is, uh, so right now we have this, right? Um, so this is just R, not e to the RT. So we'll find that. And then we got S inverse, which I don't want to find. And so, all right, how do we find e to the RT? So what is e to the RT, right? What is e to the RT? Well, it's not this guy. Um, so, so we need e to the RT. And so let's find e to the RT, right? e to the RT, okay. Right, so e to the RT is actually, uh, is, it, it's, it's a gimmick, right? So we actually didn't need to find R to find e to the RT because e to the RT then is for every eigenvalue on the diagonal, right? So here, um, this negative two is the only eigenvalue on the diagonal, right? Because uh, it's the only real eigenvalue. And so uh, remember the way we put this two in was just how you put any other eigenvalue in a diagonal matrix. And so this first entry of R then is just gonna be E to the negative two T, right? And again, I'm gonna write R over here. Okay. And so that's cool. And now what? So, so that makes sense, right? You just raise the diagonal values to whatever. Um, what is this box down here? Then what is this two by two box down here? Okay. That two by two box down there has the following form. It's going to be e to the a t times a two by two matrix which is cosine bt, sine bt, negative sine bt, cosine bt, all right? And what are a and b? a and b are these guys up here, okay? a is negative two in our case, and b is one in our case. So, in, so we would get e to the negative two t, zero, 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 zero. a is negative two, so e to the negative two t times uh, cosine t, right, because b is negative, well, b is 1, b is positive 1, all right, so you just get cosine t. Now you get e to the negative 2t sine t, e to the negative 2t, uh, negative e to the 2t sine t, and e to the negative 2t cosine t, all right, and that's, this is e to the rt right here. So this is e to the negative 2t zero 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 e to the negative two t cosine t e to the negative two t sine t negative e to the negative two t sine t and e to the negative two t cosine t all right and so now you can find e to the a t just by multiplying all this garbo out remember you have to find s inverse as well um and on a on an exam, you kind of have to multiply the complex like these complex ones out, because if you leave it in this form, like professors are gonna be like, "What the hell? I never taught it like this." Uh, so you, you're gonna have to multiply it out correctly. Um, but again, your your alternative was to have s be your eigenvectors, and then you have to invert imaginary values. So you can use this S e to the R T S inverse way, or if you just want to like diagonal diagonalize it in quotation marks, uh, use S R S inverse. But yeah, e S e to the R T S inverse. Uh, here's how you do it for a three by three, and yeah, you can just now generalize this to you know higher dimensional matrices. Um, but you probably won't see more than a three by three. Okay, so that's it for chapter seven. We're moving on to differential equations now exciting and so next video then i'll introduce uh how to solve very general differential uh, the easiest of the differential equations and we'll plug through that chapter we only got two left i'm actually surprised i've made it this far with how much work i've had so far this summer and yeah the series is wrapping up quickly it looks like we're, we're, we're getting towards the end